Hello everyone, back again for episode 10. I'm not going to reread that intro again, even I'm getting tired of hearing that. Today, however, we are moving on from uh, just our CAD views. CAD, does, uh, CAD is one step in the process, but the next step is actually working with the foam. We've, uh, in this series, we've talked about foam, we've talked about CAD, we've talked about how to use one CAD program, SketchUp, to uh, actually draw and develop the templates that we're going to need, but we gotta use those templates, and that takes tools. And this episode is going to discuss the tools necessary. Now, there aren't very many of them, and they don't cost very much money. Some, uh, or most of which, you can cobble together at home if you have uh, uh, any sort of a 30-year box hanging around like I do. So let's move into, uh, into tools uh, used. And I'm no uh, Tim at, uh, at tool time, so it might not be as, uh, as interesting as that guy. But here is what I use in order to shape foam. Before we get started on some of the individual tools involved, I'd like to say a word or two about the power supplies that I use to drive my tools. We'll go up here. This is a, a bench power supply, 5 amp rated. It's very inexpensive. You can get them all day long on eBay and Amazon for less than 50 bucks. It is not absolutely necessary, but it sure makes things a lot easier when it comes to cutting foam. The important thing here is make sure that you get one that's rated for 5 amps or better. Don't mess around with the, uh, the little 3 amp models. You'll save yourself a lot of grief. Get a 5 amp or better power supply if you go this route. Uh, well, we have a jet passing overhead right now. But we'll step over here to the other place where I have a power supply hooked up for the drop wire foam cutter. Then we're going to come back over here and talk about each uh, of these tools individually. The other power supply that I have is for my drop wire uh, wing core cutter. And we'll be talking about this tool uh, a bit later when we get to the part where we're actually cutting the wings. But the power supply for it is a very simple power supply. Uh, they're available uh, in lots of places uh, as a bench power supply. Now this one is a, a, a 35 amp. You don't need one that's that powerful, but this is one that I just happen to have for my electronics days sitting around, so I put it to good use. The actual wire is control by the use of this LED dimmer up here on top. The power supply hot wires go into that dimmer, out of the dimmer, and the knob up here allows me to set the power level on the wire. These dimmers are very inexpensive. They cost, I think, about $2.50 on eBay. And let me see if I can get right on top of that one so you can see what it looks like. Uh, these are LED dimmers. They work better than the old wiper arm potentiometer style dimmers, and I've never had one fail. Uh, this is about the fourth or fifth one that I've had that I've set up for other people, and they work a treat. So this is all of the electrical power supplies that drive all of my uh, long wire tools. Now, we have some other uh, tools over here that I'll talk about individually in just a moment that are also powered, but you're going to need something that can drive a long wire, and this will do it. Okay, we're back over here with the tools, but the first thing I want to talk about is the board that we're going to be using to cut out the actual foam blocks. And this is a pretty simple setup. All it is is a piece of uh, Formica covered countertop that I adopted out of a dumpster. It was at a building site where the kitchen was being remodeled and this was just one of the countertops 
that was being thrown away. It's about four feet long, um, about 21, 22 inches wide, and it's covered with formica, which is perfect for our use because it's nice and slick, and uh, the foam slides over it for slicing the foam or uh, anytime you're using it to position it to cut into blocks. And you'll see how that's going to happen a little bit later, but right now here, are the, here is the, uh, the working end uh, of the uh, setup, and there are two vertical guides that guide the wire as it comes down the face of this guide and cuts through any foam that might be laying on the table. Very important is this routed trough that you see all the way across. That allows the wire to actually drop below the level of the table when it gets down here to cut through the foam instead of just coming down to the surface of the table which would cause a problem at the bottom of a cut. So you want it to drop all the way through the foam. It's also very important and I use a small square to make sure that these guides are absolutely uh, perpendicular to the surface. If you don't keep these things square you're going to end up with something that looks like uh, the Leaning Tower of Pizza after a couple of segments. But keeping it square is, uh, is easy and just make sure I reset it or I check the settings every time I, I do a series of really important cuts. But that board is, uh, is all there is to it. There's one other little thing that I do. Um, I put a, a piece of wood, a little one by two piece of wood block under this end of the board and that tilts it. And that tilt is enough when gravity starts pulling this wire down, the tilt is enough to keep the wire up against the face of the guide. Uh, instead of tending to wander if it hits an inclusion in the foam or anything like that, um, it just stays nice and firm up against the front of these guides and keeps your cuts nice and true. Okay, now time to talk about the individual tools. Before picking up each tool and going over it, I want to add one more thing about powering these tools. Um, if you go on RC Groups, uh, which is a great modeling resource, by the way, it's just www.rcgroups.com, you'll find tons of information on how to assemble uh, your own power supply so that you can drive these hot wire tools and uh, hot wire drop cutters and things like that. I would caution you about this though. You're also going to see on there a lot of people putting together these uh, tools and they're powering them with batteries. Uh, save yourself some grief and don't do that. It's just not worth your time. Most of these wires require a great deal of current, relatively speaking, to drive and the problem with using batteries and you're doing a series of steps with one of these tools, one of these handheld tools, and you're using a battery as a power source, is that the battery is going to be very quickly drained. And one cut following another cut following another cut and you're going to see yourself dragging the tool through the foam because all of a sudden your battery's dead. So take the time to make a powered setup, whether you go with the bench top like I did or whether my other uh, bench top power supply, which is even less expensive way to go, or one of the solutions that you'll find on RC groups using everything from uh, model uh, railroad train transformers. Any type of transformer will work a treat. Don't use 110 directly, okay? Is anyone here so unintelligent that I need to explain why you don't want to plug these wires into house current? Really? Okay. All right. Well, don't electrocute yourself. But, oh, and by the way, talking about uh, uh, model train transformers, make sure if you try that that you're using one of the older style, and they really work well. The new ones, however, to keep you from accidentally coming up with a short across the terminals, 
have circuitry built in and they will defeat our purpose because of course whatever power supply you use sees these, uh, their power terminals connected across a wire as a direct short. So you need something that can handle that. All right, enough of the lecture. Let's move on to the individual tools. The very first thing when we're talking about these tools that we really want to talk about is the wire that you use. And again, you'll see a lot of recommendations for some really silly stuff. People claim that you have to use nichrome heater wire or Rene wire or some other esoteric stuff. Well, you don't need to use that. Uh, nichrome wire is especially bad. It works great for space heaters where you're just heating it up red hot and blowing out hot air. However, it doesn't work very well at all for this because most of the time the wire is way too large in diameter. Uh, it takes a lot of current to drive it, and also it stretches like crazy under heat, which is not something you want to do. You don't want to have this tension on your hot wire cutting bow to the correct tension and then have it stretch. The answer is so simple and so easy and so inexpensive. This is a product, there are others out here, but this is made by a company called Mylan, and what it is, it's wire fishing leader. It's that simple. It's about four bucks, five bucks at Bass Pro Shops or Academy Sporting Goods or I think even Walmart in the fishing section handles this single strand wire. Uh, I use two different sizes. This one is a 0 .011, 0 .011 diameter uh, from in metric that would be 0.27 millimeters but uh, this is about the thinnest that I use. The other, and perhaps the more universal, and again, it's Mylan Fishing Leader. That's what you need, it's all you need. Five bucks, trust me. This one is .016 diameter. Now, if, uh, if you are looking around and it doesn't have the diameter on it, this is uh, it's just listed as 61 pound test. In other words, that's what the fishermen are interested in. But you're interested in the diameter, 0 0.016. And this is what most of my tools and most of my hot wires use, the 0 0.016. All right, now that we've talked about wire, let's talk about the tools. First one, if you've got a uh, a little coping saw out in your garage, you can use a coping saw. Now if you'll take a look at this end of the coping saw, I'll put it down here where you can see it against my shirt, uh, you'll see that the wire uh, attaches to a little ring there. And what that ring is, is the eye out of a fishing rod. I happen to also be a fisherman, but what you need, the important thing here, is an insulator because what we're going to be doing is attaching a wire to this end and a wire to this end of the actual cutting wire, right where my fingers are. So you need to have this insulated from this metal frame here. So you want the leads attached here and here. What that does is just act as an insulator. This is a pretty handy little tool. It's a little bit heavier than necessary and the one that I use most for handheld cutting is this. Now this is a very simple uh, thing to make. It uses, I think this is, oh, 3 seconds spring steel wire. You get these anywhere. You can get them at Home Depot, anywhere. Uh, again, this is a little one by two and very lightweight wood. This thing weighs hardly nothing. And the wire is tensioned across here. And it maintains its tension because it's fishing later and not Nichrome. Don't use Nichrome. That's tool number two, and I use this a lot, and you'll be seeing me use this when we start cutting out the foam fuselage segments. Next up on the do-it-yourself and homemade stuff is a series of tools, and here they are. Now, these are made, I happen to live in Florida, and in my backyard I have a bamboo grove, so I use little bamboo sticks for these handles. This is merely wire that's shaped into 
uh, different usable shapes. This one is a, a rectangular shape. This one shows uh, a shape that I use quite often for cutting out servo and battery pockets. All it is is just a little bit wider. Here's a really narrow one that I use for cutting uh, things like grooves in a, in a wing to hide wires and that sort of thing. All of them just stuck on little wooden or bamboo handles. And out here on the side you can see a place where the hot wire hooks up. Using a variable power supply then you select whatever it takes to drive these short pieces of wire cut to foam. Next is something that everybody's probably got in their toolbox and that's a little soldering pen, a little soldering pencil. This is a piece of just regular uh, copper wire that is stuck in the end and it heats up nicely. Uh, I use, you can use things like wheel collars or anything like that to set depth. But I use this collar to set the depth. Then when it's run along a straight edge over a piece of foam where you need to cut a groove, you can determine the depth of the groove by where you set the collars. And again, this is something almost everybody already has. It's a, uh, just a little soldering pencil. I think this is a 25 watt. Probably pretty universal. Next are two optional tools, but you'll see when we start cutting out the uh, fuselage segments, you'll see how handy these are. Some of the fuselage segments have uh, cutouts in the in the center of them. One way to do that is, of course, punch a hole through and stick in a wire, reconnect it on the other side, yada yada. I have found, however, that these little hot wands, and this one is one that I got, I think, off of a Chinese site somewhere. It has a fairly uh, thick and a fairly hot uh, hot end on it. The one I use most often is this one, and it's called a, a Styro Cutter Plus. Styro Cutter Plus, and this is available uh, again for cheap at Michael's stores. Joanne, I, I'm not sure whether it was Joanne's Fabrics or Michael's. I think it was Michael's Craft Store where I found this, but it's available all over the place. Um, I think again even Walmart carries these things. And it's just a craft cutter. It's called Styro Cutter Plus. And it works a, uh, a real treat for doing the interior cuts that we're going to have to do. It just bores right through the block and then you can trace around on these interior cuts. It makes things so much easier than having to hook up and push a flexible wire through and then refasten it and that sort of thing. So for the hot wire work that we're going to do, that's all that's necessary is just what I've shown you. Don't need anything really esoteric. You don't need anything really expensive. Just something to drive the wire, the wire, something to hold the wire, and that's what we're going to do. All right, the next things that we'll uh, be involved with is actually cutting foam. So that will do it for this really abbreviated segment. Uh, I'm glad that you're, I'm, I imagine you're all glad to hear about the uh, brevity part. All right, well, stick around for the next one, and during the next one, we will actually start cutting some foam for our models. How about that? Thank you for hanging in there so far.